They had a great Saturday series finale that went eight innings and a great opening game. But, again, the, it, it seems the theme for BYU is two pretty good games, one stinker. Unfortunately for Oklahoma, their really good game came in impressive fashion last night with a 9-4 to four win. Or pardon me, 9-5. to five, uh, Yeah, 9-4 to four win over the Sooners. BYU now 22 and 18 on the season, 5 and 12 in Big 12 play. Polston tax resolutions and accounting your tax problems don't care who you are, but we do. Kelly Maxwell has gone through her final tosses. We hope that you'll enjoy the broadcast today as much as I know we'll enjoy bringing it to you. Our producer is Kelly back in the Learfield studios. My name is Chris Plank, and thanks for joining us for the Sooner pregame show. He's going to buy Walden Cleaners and Laundry, where the difference is quality. Alana Agbayani steps up. The crowd stands up. We're ready for first pitch on a Saturday afternoon. And Maxwell, it's a swing and a foul tip on strike one. 105 p.m. with the first pitch. Right on time. Really cool to see the tributes paid to Native American heritage. They had the drum circle. They had in full dress the dance that was going on down both the third and first base line. I saw the legend Melissa Cole out there being the record keeper taking pictures. The 0-1 is a bunt right back to Maxwell. One away. Agbayani got under that one and hit it a little bit too hard. So that's a line drive to the pitcher. And there is one way. Matty Bejarano. First pitch strike from Kelly Maxwell. Maxwell was fantastic here on Thursday night. Five innings, one hit. Five strikeouts, just the one walk. Here's the 0-1. Bayerano fouls it back 0-2. She's been outstanding since the start of Big 12 play. I mean, in fairness, Kelly Maxwell has been ex outstanding all season long. The lefty brings home the 0-2 pitch. Fouled off again. It's kind of funny you see the massive following Sooner softball has amassed. If you're not perfect, if you're not living up to perfection, then you must stink. As the 0-2 pitch for Maxwell misses low, 1-2. and two. The reality is this is <laughs> what the Sooners have experienced over the last few weeks is what everyone else experiences. I don't like it. Playing rubber games, fighting for your lives on the road and at home. Here's the one-two pitch to Bejarano. There's a base hit back up the middle, nearly hit Maxwell. Hard hit ball by Bejarano. She picks up where she left off with a single. She was 0 for 2 against Maxwell on Thursday night. Went 0 for 2 last night, but had a walk, an RBI, and a run scored. That RBI sack fly in the first inning last night for Bejarano. Here's Lily Owens. Another one of those players that just feels like she's been in the middle of everything. Bounces this one to third. To second for one to first. There you go. That easy. Bring him up. 5-4-3 double play. And that's a wrap on the top half of the first. Good job, Kelly Maxwell. We head to the bottom half. Scoreless Sooner Softball presented by Love's Travel Stops. Love's Travel Stops, the heart of the highway from Learfield. Dolly got the start here. Well, pardon me. Came in in relief of Agbayani and Aguilar in two innings on Friday night. She allowed three hits, no runs, and walked one. In an inning of two-thirds on Thursday night, two hits, two runs, two walks, and a strikeout. She's, as all these 
BYU pitcher seem to be a change of pace and Oklahoma has struggled with it all weekend long everyone stands one finger in the air Jada Coleman digs in and the first pitch from Dolly is headed home Coleman takes ball one low and in little deeper in the box for Jada Coleman her back foot is actually on the chalk line in the batter's box here's the 1-0 pitch waiting and fouls it off that seems unique to me maybe some of those of you who spend a little bit more time looking at film watching the highlights might be a little bit different <laughs> I love what's happening in the stands right now. Here comes the 1 1 pitch. Hammer to right field, but right at the right fielder, Ogbayan. And there's one away. Boy, Coleman hit it hard, but it was right at Ogbayan. F9 for the first out. R Riley Boone's day, her mom, Gayla Boone, who is just an awesome person, an incredible athlete, a great mom, a great friend. At one of the games she went to for Trevor Boone, her son, they were handing out these K's that they would hold out for strikeouts. As T.R.A. Jennings digs in, the first pitch is a little bit out, ball one. And so here on Riley's senior day, they have a bunch of the K's that are being handed out, courtesy of the Osage Nation. That is really cool. I don't think it was planned. I don't think it was anything that was in a flyer for the game either. Jennings takes the 1 0 low and in. Make sure to grab it. Same infield for the most part for BYU. As Jennings waits on the 2 0 pitch. Right-handed hitting shortstop. He takes it a little high, but that top edge of the strike zone is called for strike one. Two balls and a strike. Lily Owens had been playing third last night. They've moved Udall back over to third. Owens the DP. Wow, Jennings swings through an off-speed. Story of the weekend for strike two. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch to Jennings headed home, and she fouls it straight back. That caused a few behind home plate to jump just a bit. Scoreless game, bottom of the first inning. Kelly Maxwell worked it just about in order in the first. Top half of the first, here in the first. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Jennings. Grounded foul down the third baseline on a pitch that was a little bit up. TRA turned to the home plate umpire, make sure it was a strike. Patty Gasso in her 30th season. Stands in the third base coach's box across from her. Shades activated for Sooner first base coach Foley Palima Steele. Coach Steele. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Jennings. Looped into left field. It's down for a hit. And Jennings rounds first. She's on her way to second. It's a stand-up double. Jennings muscled it into left field. And it got over the outstretched arms of both Udall and Ogbayani who were trying to give chase and by Bayerano was playing so deep in left field that it gave Jennings plenty of time to make the turn here's Ella Parker now with a runner at second and one away first pitch to the Sooner DP is in for a strike Parker hit in the four hole as the DP on Thursday night went 
One for two with a run scored. 0 for two with two walks here last night. The 0-1. A little bit low. They're going to throw behind Jennings at second. She'll get back safely. A ball and a strike. When they were... When they were talking about this BYU team on the road, at least hearing some of the tea leaves, there was one thing that stood out. The 1 1 is popped up, shallow left field again, racing out and making the catch is Ogbayani. Two away. The common theme that seemed to be passed around from player to player is that from some of their friends they had talked to in Big 12 play, there was no team that seemed to talk a little bit more trash than Oklahoma. Or, I'm, I'm sorry, than BYU. Hold up a minute. Ella Parker is headed back to home plate. Looks like they called an illegal pitch on that one. I only brought that up because about BYU and how they were known to be kind of instigators a bit. Because... When Tiare Jennings went back to the bag at second after the tag from Kamoku and kind of looked like Kamoku said something to her. That's not why we have this stoppage in play here. Though the officials, the umpires have not indicated to the media or to the crowd here that it was an illegal pitch. But indeed, that's the case. So Ella Parker, again, the rules of an illegal pitch. It's an automatic dead ball. So it makes the count now 2-1. And Parker gets another life. Here's the 2-1 pitch to the Sooner freshman headed home. Check swing foul. She gets another life. These are moments over the last couple of seasons where Oklahoma has really made their opponents pay. Parker gets the new life on the illegal pitch. Here comes the two ball and two strike. Toss from Dolly. Grounded to the right side. It'll get Jennings over to third. Nice play by Kamoku. And Parker is retired. There's two away. Here comes Kinsey Hansen. Well, now what do we have? Now we have Gorneekin coming out, and he's complaining about something with the rubber for the pitcher. And now Pete Meredith is going to go out, and well, this this is his second trip to the circle. He just he went out there to argue the call. Okay, no one seen coach if Coach Gasso doesn't have a problem with it. I guess we don't. But after the illegal pitch, and you are allowed to walk out and get an explanation from the umpire. It's just usually the head coach is the one that does it. But in this instance, it was Pete Meredith. Our, yes, Pete Meredith, their assistant coach. Here's K-9. Scoreless game. Sooner is looking to break out. How about a two-out hit from Hanson here? The first pitch to K-9 is in for a strike. Nine-game hitting streak for Hanson. She's been fantastic during that streak, hitting 538. No balls and a strike from Dolly. She brings home the 0-1. Hanson swings and pops it up. Who's got it? The catcher can't find it. And Morrow lets it fall right in front of her. And now Hansen gets another chance. You all came charging in from third, pointing. But Morrow was never able to find it. But the count is 0-2 on Hanson. She waits. The pitch outside. Hanson missed five games due to that injury that took place against Texas Tech. On a home run. 
It's a pinch hitter. Kind of a surprise appearance on her senior night three weeks ago. The one-two check swing foul on a pitch that was up and in. Her first start since the March 15th injury wasn't until this past Friday against Texas. Since her return to the starting lineup, she's been seeing the ball and hitting the ball well. Though she hasn't had a home run since March 15th. Here's the one-two. Ripped down the left field line. Foul. Just foul. Just foul down the left field line. Five runs batted in, 14 of 26 by my math. It's a 538 average. Five runs batted in, but again, seven home runs this season, but her last one came against Tech. A ball and two strikes with Jennings at third in a scoreless game, and she reaches and pops it into shallow right field. Racing in late and dropping it is the right fielder on Bayani. Off to second goes Hanson. Jennings scores on a dropped pop-up to right field, and it's one nothing Sooners. I know it sounds wild to say for a team that at one point this year was rolling in the midst of a 70-game winning streak and a squad that only lost by a run in back-to-back -back games on the road against Texas. But Oklahoma needed a break like that. E9 will officially be the call, and understandably so. Ogbayani had it right in her mitt, and she dropped it. See if the Sooners can add two at first pitch to Torres. Drops in for strike one. Hanson at second. Sooners jump out and do something they didn't do one time last night, which is take the lead. Here comes the 0-1 pitch to Torres. Well outside, one ball, one strike. Torres back in the starting lineup. Thursday night, walked twice, scored a run in the Sooners' 8-zip win. Came off the bench, walked once, and was 1-for-1 one one in both her plate appearances. Here's the 1-1 pitch to Torres. She turned on one, up and in, and fouled it straight back. This is a strong wind blowing out to right field. I don't even know if we've given you the weather yet today. The 1-2 pitch headed home to Torres, and she lines one down the right field line. Foul. Slicing foul. It is 80 degrees in Norman today. But windy, windy, windy. 24 mile an hour wins. Unbelievable. See if maybe she can get one up in that jet stream here. Blowing out to right field. Outside 2 2. South Southwest winds at 24 miles an hour. You know if you're sitting in the outfield and listening in, you're feeling it, you're living it. You knew it if you were driving around right now. If you're outside trying to do yard work. Here's the 2-2 to Alina Torres. Line drive up the alley and left center field, but racing over to make the catch is Owens in center field. That looked like it might have been destined for extra bases, and Owens ranged over and made the play to end the Sooner threat. Matty Udall and Kayla Kamoku headed to the plate in the... Top of the second inning, Oklahoma leads BYU 1-0. In our Trails Golf Club weather report, we mentioned how windy it is today. It's not going to die down too much for baseball this evening either. Throughout the evening, 24 miles an hour, 23 miles an hour. Probably not a day where you can burn, just saying. Trails Golf Club where you can experience everything you love about golf and more. 
Visit trailsgolf.com. First pitch swinging for Hunter Alba, and she fouls it back for strike one. If you're hitting into this wind today out at the trails, it's definitely a two-and-a-half club win. If you've got it behind you, let it rip. Here's the 0-1 pitch for the right-handed hitting first baseman, and she pops one up to the right side. Sid Sanders shielding from the sun. Who's got it? Sanders does, and there's one away. Sid Sanders, by the way, is in our play to watch spotlight, courtesy of Love's Travel Stops. Love's Travel Stops, the heart of the highway. She's due up next inning. Here's Maddie Udall. I think I saw yesterday the craziness of softball. It was insane. Upsets galore as the first pitch to Udall is low. The number two, four, five, six, seven, and nine ranked teams in the D1 softball poll all were beaten at one point this weekend. And Washington is off this weekend. And that ball's hammered deep to right center field, and we're tied. Maddie Udall crushes one over the right center field wall. And we're knotted up at one on a no doubter off the bat of Udall. That was smoked. Here's Kayla Komoku. Well, Sooners have had to experience body blows after body blows all weekend long from this BYU team. Komoku takes strike one. So why not another one here right off the bat in the top of the second inning with one out? The 0-1 up high. Maxwell toes the rubber. That wind has just been blowing straight out to right field all day as this one's popped up into shallow left field. Riley Boone is under it. Makes the catch, and there's two away. This, without elite pitching, would be the kind of day where you would expect to see double-digit runs put on the board by at least one team. The first pitch grounded, foul down the third baseline. A couple of finals already in today across college softball. South Carolina has forced a rubber game against Arkansas, beating D.J. Gasso's Hogs 2-1. to one. And Alabama in the first game of its series against Texas A&M beat the Aggies 2-zip in Tuscaloosa. Swing and a miss to the 0-1. No balls and two strikes on Haley Mora. Obviously, we'll be keeping a close eye on Ames and Austin as it looks like we're going to be in a battle for this regular season conference title with the way things went yesterday. 0-2, low and away. And last week. Oklahoma State has already fallen behind Iowa State. That's one nothing. Cyclones in the bottom of the second inning. Texas and Baylor just underway. Scores brought to you by Air Comfort Solutions. Your total home solution for plumbing, heating, air conditioning, and electrical. Make the winning call today. The one-two from Maxwell. Just got a piece of it to stay alive at Morrow. Morrow's season average is just 195. She went 0 for 2 with two strikeouts on Thursday night. And then went nuts, went 2 for 3 here with a run scored in an RBI yesterday. Here's the 1 2 from Maxwell. Busted inside on the hands on what looked like strike 3 is ball 2.
The 2-2 is popped up, right field, fight that win, Pickering. Cassidy shields the sun with her hand, puts her glove up, makes the catch, inning over. But BYU strikes back. They get a solo home run from Matty Udall. And as we head to the bottom of the second inning, Oklahoma and BYU are knotted at one. This is Sooner Softball from Learfield. 1-1. One, one. OU and BYU tied up as we head to the bottom of the second inning. It'll be Cassidy Pickering, Alyssa Brito, and Sid Sanders. Cassidy has that season average at 393. As she digs in for the first pitch, she's hitting 571 as a leadoff and had a big cut on an off speed and spun through it for strike one. Got the check-in from the grandparents listening in in Willow Creek, Montana. They're tuned in on the radio side while watching synced up. We appreciate that every game. The 0-1 has popped up. Foul territory down the line, and a basket catch is made by Udall, and there's one away. Doug Hamilton's already in from Hockley, Texas. I see Larissa Holquin and Eric have checked in, as has our man Kendall, who's listening while mowing. We got our third inning shout outs coming up at OU on the air. Let us know where you're listening from at OU on the air. Third inning shout outs brought to you by Century Roofing. Tie game at one. Here's Alyssa Brito batting for the first time this season in the seven hole. And she swings and fouls off the first pitch. A 414 average this year for Brito. 14 home runs, that's second on the team. 40 runs batted in. 4 0. Not too shabby. No balls and a strike. Brito takes slow, 1 and 1. Them social media streets were rough last night. But, as Coach Gasso said, they know what it looks like. They've got the tools. They've got the experience. See if the Sooners can bounce back today. Brito, did she check her swing? No. A ball and two strikes. I mean, Oklahoma has just been flummoxed by what BYU has thrown at them here today. Sid Sanders waits on deck. And this weekend for that matter. Brito behind on the count now, a ball and two strikes, and she loops one right to the shortstop, Ogbayani, for a moment. It looked like there might be enough oomph on that to get it over the head of Ogbayani, but the shortstop went back and made the catch, and there's quickly two away. Well, it's been a rough stretch over the last 13 games for Sid Sanders, even with her walk-off run rule home run on Thursday night. Here's the first pitch to the Sooner first baseman. High ball one. In her last 13 games, as we talked about in the starting lineups, two home runs, six runs batted in, and a 111 average. One ball and no strikes. Sanders waits the pitch low to him But in the 13 previous games, so if you take the last 26 games The first half of that was her incredible run where she was hitting 520 in those games seven home runs 12 runs uh, 12 runs scored and 25 runs batted in in a 13 game stretch Here's the 2-0 way outside ball three She'd also walked 13 times and did not strike out in the last 13 games. Still a good number of walks, seven walks, but six strikeouts. 3-0 pitch, down she has the green light here. She doesn't, and it's ball four. Sooners have a base runner on a two-out walk, Sanders. On the season for Sid Sanders. Chalk that walk number 
up to 29. She is second on the team with 29 walks. And here's Riley Boone on her senior day. We had a run there where players on their senior day had homered. Boone lays down a beautiful bunt that stays fair. The throw is not in time. Boone beat it out. Somehow that stayed fair right in front of Morrow, who popped out and threw a rocket to first base. I think BYU is going to challenge this. I don't know how close it truly is. They look down the right field line. I don't know who Pete Meredith was talking to. I think they have a coach that's down on the end of the baseline to kind of see if it's worth the challenge. It was close from the naked eye. This is where we count on all of our intrepid replay reporters. My guy Richard Martis. Steve in New York. This review though is brought to you by Noble McIntyre and McIntyre Law. The law firm you should turn to for all your personal injury needs. 1-1 game. We're in the bottom of the second inning. Oklahoma and BYU. No one's really had a since yet. I haven't seen frustration from the Sooner side or not. Haven't really been able to gauge the time that umpires spend if there is a feel for whether or not the more time they spend the more chance it is to work in our favor <laughs> trying to get the the feel for how these replays have worked out it was bang bang at first BYU has a coach that is at the end of their dugout and I believe that's Ken Brook and Gordon Eakin, who's in his 22nd season here at BYU, immediately looked down as did Pete Meredith. And they said, you think we should challenge? And right away he popped out. Fall a, a view Steele. Coach Steele is over at first base right now talking with Gordon Eakin. Cowboy Sooner says safe. You were the first in, so I hope I hope your replay is right, Cowboy Sooner. It's funny, you feel like it's a long review. Here we go, we'll find out now. The umpires come out and they say, they point and they say, safe. You win the elusive ham sandwich at So Sick of Winning. Bang, bang play at first base. And it gives Jada Coleman an at bat with runners at scoring position. It'll go down as the second hit of the game for the Sooners. Each team has a hit. Well done, Cowboys Sooner. First pitch to Jada. who Flied out her first time up, takes it low and in. Jada flight out to right field her first time up. You get one up in the stratosphere here down that right field line. Look out. Though Jada likes to go the other way, too. Saying even as much that she kind of likes the wind blowing out opposite field more. Ball too low. Well, this was a moment where last night the Sooners weren't able to really get anything. Even going back to their Texas series. Clutch moments. Big moments in games where... You have an opportunity to start to create some separation and doubt. The 2-0 pitch to Coleman. Almost hits her ball three. <laughs> three balls and no strikes. Two away, first and second. Wind has the flags blowing straight out to right field. The 3-0 pitch to Coleman is ball four. Bases are, oh my goodness. 
That pitch looked like it kicked up a little dirt. Dolly gets the call. Three balls and a strike. Jennings was starting to stride towards the batter's box. Here's that 3-1. Coleman pops it up. Shallow right field. Ogbayani is fighting the sun. Makes the catch. Inning over. Well, tough break on what looked like it should have been ball four. Coleman pops out on the next pitch, and the Sooner is stranded two more. Even in Dell City, Emily Snook is at get air in Norman with a bunch of fourth graders. Oh, my goodness, Emily, run. Brandon Jacks, the mayor of Medill, is in. And the Kitches, Shirley in her easy chair and more, and Galen in the mobile command vehicle. The clash for a cause kickball tournament today. Y'all enjoy the game as the first pitch is a little bit up for ball one to Alea Agbayani. Today's game broadcast is brought to you by Love's Travel Stops, the heart of the highway. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Line drive right at Brito. One away. Hit hard, but Brito was right there. Macy Simmons strides to the play. Angela and Doug are radiating Sooner Love from Atlanta. Nate Dog is in. Sooner Judy and Arudoso. Well, on her way from Redoso to Silver City, New Mexico. First pitch swinging, and Macy Simmons fouls it back for strike one. Macy Simmons is a name we haven't written in the scorebook this weekend yet. As the senior takes the 0-1 right on the outer edge for strike two. There's no way this team can have some secret weapon they haven't thrust upon us, please, after what happened the last few nights. As the 0-2 pitch misses low. And this is only the 13th start of the season for Simmons, hitting 216 on the season. No home runs, four runs batted in. The 1-2. Swing and a miss. Maxwell got her on the rise, and there's quickly two away in the third. J.O. and Debbie Park are in from Montezuma, Iowa. Larry's in a St. Pete Sooner Den, as always. Melanie and Brynn in Seattle, Joel in Rogersville, Mickey and Nick. Nick's in Georgia, Mickey's in Sugarland. Trey Linda Kerr has got us in Sharice in Austin. First pitch to Agbayani is a little bit up, ball one. All right, let's, let's give some flowers to the opponents in the day that Ilana Agbayani had yesterday. It was impressive as she takes the 1-0 pitch low, two balls and no strikes. With her four hits yesterday, she became the first player with four hits against OU since February 29th of 2020. Maxwell falls behind 3-0. That was when the Sooners played in North Texas. And Hannah Rebar had four hits on February 29th, 2020. To say that that season was off to a rough start is an understatement. 3-0 is in for a strike. At 20... 20 season, the unfortunate pandemic that shut the year down. It was also the last time the Sooners gave up as much runs as they did, as many runs as they did, as the 3-1 misses, and Ogbayani is aboard with a walk. And here comes Matty Bejarano, who has one of the two BYU hits. Sooners also have not lost two series in a season since 0-6 when it dropped series to Missouri, Texas, and Nebraska. DJ Sanchez, who's on the TV call. Dylan Mathis, DJ Mathis in those days, was a freshman on that team. She said it was a challenge. The first pitch is low. As Texas had Kat Osterman, and Kinsey Hansen senses a little frustration from Maxwell show, so she's going to jog out and chat with her. OU has not lost back-to-back -back series. Well, OU hasn't lost two series in a season since 06. 
when it dropped sets to Missouri, Texas, and Nebraska. The Texas series was in Norman that year and was the last regular season home series lost by OU. They haven't lost back-to-back -back series, there you go, since 2004. So we're in rarefied air. Runner goes, the 1-0 pitch throw down, it's not in time. That everything about the release from K-9 to even the throw itself seemed like it was just taking too long, and Ogbayani makes him pay. And Maxwell has fallen behind two balls and no strikes here to Ogbayani. And that's fouled back. Or excuse me, Bejarano. <laughs> Ogbayani stole the bag. Bejarano fouled off the 2-0 pitch to make it two balls and a strike. One one game. We're in the third. Top of the third with two away. BYU's put a runner at second. Two one. Swing and a miss. Maxwell threw it right by her. Two and two. Sooners got their run on an error in the first inning. BYU on a solo home run from Matty Udall. The 1 2, just staying alive. Fouled it off to Bejarano. That 2020 season, by the way, was the last time that the Sooners had given up nine or more runs. They gave up 12 to Washington. Gordon Egan was wanting to slow things down for some reason. Had a word with a home plate umpire. No idea what it was about, but we're back to action on the 2-2, which is high ball three. Three balls and two strikes. The pitch for Maxwell. Did she catch it off the foul? No. Staying alive off the foul ball is Bejarano. Looked for a moment like it might have been a foul tip, but it just fell out of the glove. Three balls and two strikes. Here's the pitch from Maxwell. Swing and a miss. Got her! Inning over. Good job, Kelly Maxwell. The two-out walk to Ogbayani, the strikeout of Bejarano. It is the third strikeout for Maxwell. As we head to the bottom of the third inning. Oklahoma and BYU knotted up at one. It'll be Jennings, Parker, and Hanson for the Sooners. Tiare has one of the two Sooner hits. Third inning shout-outs brought to you by Century Roofing. Century Roofing is... On guard for Oklahoma. <laughs> CenturyRoofingOK.com. First pitch to TRA is up high, ball one. Three three game between Texas and Baylor in the bottom of the first inning down in Austin. Iowa State takes a one zip lead over Oklahoma State to the top of the fourth. Here's the 1 0 to Jennings low. Two balls and no strikes. I know this is a captain obvious moment, but big hitters count here potentially for Jennings. The 2-0. Ball three. Oh, you loves as is tuned in from uh, the Sam's Club in Dallas. As we're going to get a trip to the circle here from Morrow, the catcher. Big Sky Sooner and TJ Carter are back on the deck sinking in Noble and Gordon Eakin has come out with his lineup card. And the first base umpire is allowing Pete Meredith to walk out to the circle with a 3-0 count. BYU is going to make a pitching change, and they're going to do the same thing they did last night. They're going to move Ogbayani from short to the circle. They're going to bring off Dolly, which means she can re-enter. Ogbayani came in for a half inning last night. 
credited with two-thirds of an inning, actually. Gave up three hits, two runs, and walked one. But again, this is a very... Well, she's pitched... Alyssa Agbayani pitched on Thursday night. Elena Agbayani last night, only a third of an inning. And she's got a 3-0 count here, and she misses with ball four. You got the Ogbayani sisters and Elena and Alyssa. One of them's in right field. One of them is that short now pitch. <laughs> All right, here's Ella Parker. We got our lineups fixed. Parker is 0 for 1, and she takes strike one. So Jennings reaches for the second time today on the walk. OU has stranded two base runners, but it's the first time tonight they put the leadoff hitter aboard. Here's the 0-1 pitch to Ella Parker. That hitter. It just nicked off the Evo shield. It's one of the few times you could hear it. I don't even know if it's worth changing this, my lineup board here too much. Because you know that Gorneekin's going to find a way to shift things around again at some point. Indeed, by the way, confirmation that is Simmons behind home plate for now. And Morrow did indeed move over to short. All right, here's Kana. Reached on an air on a fly ball to right field her last time up. Sooners really haven't had that rocket swing yet as the first pitch is a strike. You really haven't seen... A laser off the bat of a Sooner hitter quite yet. Bottom of the third, 1-1 one, one game. The pitch to TR, or to a Hanson with TR at second, and Parker at first is a little bit in. A ball and a strike is the count. Deb and Rachel checking in from Smithfield, Virginia at the Wine and Brew Festival. Be careful of those festivals. Deb, they hit you hard. The 1-1. One, one. Caught the outer edge, 1-2. and two. By that I mean, you just think you're having a sip. Next thing you know, you're cheering and yelling, and you got the radio on blast with Sooner Softball. The 1-2 pitch to Hanson is a little bit up, 2-2. Two and two. There is one thing that is definitive about Agbayani in the circle. And she throws a lot harder than what it appears any of the other pitchers we've seen so far have this weekend. A 2-2 pitch is an off speed that's ripped. It's caught at third by Udall, but everyone gets back safely. That was a big time play by Udall, who reached up and took extra bases away from Hansen. One away for Alina Torres. Hansen a quick little debrief with Torres. Parker at first, Jennings at second. 1-1 one, one game, we're in the bottom of the third inning already. Torres, her last time up, lined out to left field. She takes the first pitch low for ball one. Callie and Kim Walker out in Florida. Kevin and Steph in Topeka, Kansas. Bo's listening from Nompton. Mo Mandy and Torts got us tuned in. 1-0 pitch catches that outside corner. Kyle Davis gave us the replay on Boone at first. I, I think they got it right. And obviously I feel that way from the last half inning. One ball in, one strike. The pitch. Rip foul. Torres got one up in her eyes and hammered it down the left field line. Colby's in Yukon doing yard work today. Joe's fixing a fence in Goldsby. That's where we're that's what we're doing after the game, Emma. We're fixing yard work. Miss Jane Jetson down in Dallas. Big Brad, a big Brad Taylor in Tulsa. Long wait for the one-two action clock at six. Here it comes. And Torres lines one off the glove of Udall in a left field. Base is loaded with only one out for Cassidy Pickering. That ball took a sharp hop 
on a fast liner. And there was nothing that Udall could do with it. That'll be a hit, and the bases are juiced for Pickering. Pickering popped out to third in her last at bat, takes the first pitch for strike one. BYU brings its infield in. Blow this game open, Cassidy. Blow it open. The 0-1 misses low and in. One ball, one strike. Again, if it sounds like a broken record, these are the moments that the Sooners haven't been able to cash in this weekend. Golden scoring opportunity, the 1-1. Ball two. That's a really close pitch. Home plate umpire today is Chris Neighbors. Villarreal, Sergio Villarreal at first, and Jerry Jones over third. Here's the 2-1 to Pickering. She turns and grounds it at first. We'll have a play at the play. The throw is on time. They force out Jennings, but the bases will remain loaded. Well, when you put Alyssa Brito in the seven hole, you could only imagine a dream scenario where you need a two-out hit and you're counting on one of your best hitters being up in that spot. As Brito looked down to the third baseline, Coach Gasser, Gasso gave her the calm down, calm down, stay calm. There's a gap in right and left center field. The lines are hers if she wants it. First pitch, in for a strike. You feel like this is a big moment in this game, a big moment in this weekend. No balls and a strike. Outside, one and one. One one game, bases loaded for the Sooners. Now with two outs. Ogbayani rocks and fires. Brito loops one in the right center field. It's down for a hit. One run will score. Here comes Torres. She'll score. It's a two out. Clutch. Two run. Bases loaded. Single from Alyssa Brito. Just what the doctor ordered. It's 3-1 Sooners. In a moment when Oklahoma needed a clutch hit, the senior comes through. Here's Sid Sanders, first and third, two outs. Sid Sanders hit one off the light pole, the top of the light pole in batting practice over at Marita Hines today. She takes the first pitch for strike one. Sanders can't believe it. We were over watching batting practice, and Sanders actually hit the light pole, one of the bulbs on top of it. Hit at least three out of the stadium. And she hammers one, but it's not deep enough. Right in the right field is Ogbayani, who ranges over to make the catch. And the inning is over. Three to one, the Sooners lead it as we head to the top of the fourth inning. Clutch, two out, bases loaded, two run scoring single from Alyssa Brito. Orthodontics exclusively is proud to sponsor the junior captain of the game. Junior Captain is the ultimate fan experience for children 6 through 12. There are two orthodontics exclusively locations, with one in Norman and South Oklahoma City. And every consultation is free. Here's the first pitch to Lily Owens from Kelly Maxwell. It's in for a strike. Today's Junior Captain, 8-year-old Hadley Kirby from Hubbard Elementary. Hadley was down with the team before first pitch. Enjoying the sights and sounds. Ground ball towards third. Easy play for Brito. Up throws high. Sanders, though, got her foot back on the bag. And there's one away. Big time stretch from Sid Sanders to get her foot back on the bag. On an errant throw by Brito. And there's one out. Listen, maybe a little bit fired up over there at third. Here's Hunter Abba. She popped out to second her last time up. Right-handed hitting first baseman. Here's the first pitch from Maxwell. In for a strike. 
Well, it's been wild to look around uh, college softball and realize how important some of these scores are today for the Sooners' chase for the Big 12. Of course, most importantly, OU leads at 3-1 to one here in the bottom, our top of the fourth inning. The 0-1. Line drive, center field. Coleman comes racing in. Oh, my goodness! Dana Coleman made a diving catch! Head first, no doubt, Jada! Two away. I mean, that was amazing. You don't see many better than that. It looked like a lead or a one out single. And out of nowhere, Jada looking like Superman. Two outs. Here's Matty Udall. In for a strike. This game, this this way, the way the Sooners are playing defense right now with Kelly Maxwell in the circle is reminiscent of the very first game of the season. This has a lot of, well, first big game of the season. A lot of Duke vibes to it. As the 0-1 pitch looked pretty good, missed inside 1-1. One and one. Those other scores we're keeping an eye on are very interesting. 3-3 between Texas and Baylor in the top of the second. And Iowa State has taken a one-zip lead over Oklahoma State into the top of the fifth. Grounder to third, should do it for the inning. Brito bobbles it, picks it up, throws a strike, inning over. One, two, three. All featuring in some way, shape, or form some impressive play from the D. BYU has gone back to its, I guess you could say, normal look. As Agbayani has moved back to short. Moro back in behind the plate. And the new pitcher is Mares. With Oklahoma leading 3-1 to one as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Due up for the Sooners, Riley Boone, Jada Coleman, and T.R.A. Jennings. They had a tribute to Riley Boone. And the song that was playing is Blue Suede Shoes. <laughs> and they're playing it as her walk-up song here, too. What a cool moment on her senior day for Riley Boone. All the festivities around it and to see the Sooner defense do what it's done. She's one for one on the day. First pitch is... A little bit out, ball one. Shiana Morris. She got the start here last night. Gave the Sooners some fits as all of these spinners, thumbers, off speeds have this week. And the 1-0 skips back to the backstop, ball one. Four and two-thirds total last night. The Sooners did get five hits, scored four runs. She walked eight batters. The Sooners put their leadoff hitter on every inning last night. The 2-0. Boone started to run up the box. Looked like she might slap it down, but instead took it high for ball three. Three runs on four hits for the Sooners. Kelly Maxwell shutting down the Cougars on just two hits. Here's the 3 0. Ball four. That might have been the best pitch of all of them. And Boone is aboard. Here's Jada. Jada's 0 for 2, and if you want to go back in the scorebook, Jada is 0 for her last 5. Make it 6. First pitch to the Sooner center fielder. She lays down a beautiful bunt. It stays fair. The throw is in time. They got her, but Riley Boone catches Udall at third, snooze in, and takes third. It was a bang-bang play at first. The ball barely stayed fair. If it might have rolled out another half a millimeter, Boone would have beaten it out. Instead, 
it works, I guess, as a sacrifice. <laughs> because Riley Boone is now standing at third. Here's the first pitch to the Sooner shortstop, Tiari Jennings, who's one for one on the day. Homered here last night. Takes it low, ball one, and Jennings shakes her head. That's not my pitch. They are going to credit J. Cole with a sacrifice. Here comes the 1-0. Little bit out, two balls and no strikes. Good hitters count here. The 2-0 pitch swings and fouls it straight back. Jennings ugh, grits her teeth in frustration as he turns to locate the foul ball. Two balls and a strike. Kiare waits. The lefty deals. It's in for a strike. 2-2. Morrill's done a pretty good job framing some of those pitches behind the play, too. Give her credit. The 2-2 pitch to Jennings. Reaches, pokes it, one hop to second. Nice play by Kamoku, who stares back Boone and throws out Jennings. She was in tight and made the play of the day for BYU. Two away. Here's Parker. Well, the Sooners again are in a spot where they need a two-out hit. Alyssa Brito gave it to him last half inning. Can Ella Parker give it to him here in the fourth? Sooners up 3-1. Boone stands at third with two outs. This is a lefty-lefty matchup. Mares first pitch swings and fouls it off this Parker down the left field line. That was a heck of a play by Kamoku to stay on it. No balls and a strike. The pitch to Parker in the dirt doesn't get away far enough for Boone to get home. Morrow's been really good about those here this weekend. Morris has made her work. <laughs> The 1-1 pitch from the lefty. Check swing on a pitch low. She did not go. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Game pushes past an hour and 15 minutes. 3-1, OU leads it. The 2-1 pitch to Parker. Laces it foul down the left line off the netting. And the count is two balls and two strikes. Kinsey Hansen in the on-deck circle. Parker's 0 for 1, was hit by a pitch in the third, scored a run. Two balls and two strikes. Boone still at third. The pitch to Ella Parker headed home. Ripped to the right side off a big hop. Kamoku, the second baseman, makes it look easy. And throws to the bag, and the inning is over. Man, Oklahoma gets the leadoff walk to Boone. After the sack bunt by Coleman, she's standing at third with one out, and the Sooners can't push it home. Get along to Toby Keats. How do you like me now as we head to the fifth? Fifth innings brought to you by the House Smith Restaurant Group. Enjoy great dining experiences at any of our restaurants. Visit HalSmith.com. That's HalSmith.com to learn more. 3-1 Sooners. Back to work for Kelly Maxwell. It's Kayla Kamoku, who was solid over at second all inning. Haley Morrow and Aleha Ogbayani will bat. First pitch headed home. Hot. I saw our friends Michelle and Randy are tuned in from Kapole, Hawaii. Fun fact. Did you know that the Ogbayani sisters are the daughters of former Major League Baseball, Benny? Ogbayani, it's the first pitch as well. I did, but I also, in my 
time always thought it was Biniak Bayani. The pronunciation guide for BYU has it as AWG. My whole world was thrown into a tailspin. Here's the 2 0. That's in for a strike, 2 and 1. Had those two clutch ho uh, home runs during the 20, uh, 2000 season. And Benny. The 2-1 two, uh, two pitch is a little bit low, ball three. Not bad pedigree. There is a camp going on here at Love's, and it was pretty wild to see some of the names of former football players' daughters who were here. It's a 3-1, is a check swing, 3-2. and two. You see a lot of names that you grew up watching. It's like, wait, they got a kid to play softball? <laughs> Vinny Agbayani was one of them. 3-2 pitch, Maxwell's worked her way back. That's fouled back to Keila Kamoku. Three runs on four hits for the Sooners. A run on two hits, the only hit for BYU. That's generated a run was the solo home run was by Matty Udall in the second. 3-2, grounded, foul down the third baseline. Oklahoma State has taken a 2-1 to one lead over Iowa State in the top of the fifth inning. Take a look at some scores brought to you by Air Comfort Solutions. Baylor and Texas are still knotted up at three. That's in the bottom of the third. That wind has stayed blowing out strong to right field. you got to be careful there. 3-2. Check swing. No, it's not. Cold strike three. There you go, Kelly Maxwell. Wave those Ks. One away. And for Maxwell, her third strike out of the game. And here is Haley Mora. First pitch strike. Three strikeouts for Kelly Maxwell tonight. The lefty facing Haley Mora. Check swing. No, it wasn't. Strike two. For Maxwell on the season, 93 strikeouts. 55 of those coming in Big 12 play. The 0-2 just staying alive is Mora. She flied out to right field in the second. Wanted to take a minute to thank everyone who had been tuned in, including the crew in Apollo Beach, Florida, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Mike's down in Marlowe, Tommy Joe and James in Woodstock, Vermont. Appreciate you all. As the 0-2, just again staying alive, is Moro. Burley Boomer had checked in lane. It's been a fun one. It's kind of been a bit of a nail-biter, I would say. We're all kind of waiting for the Sooners to explode here. The 0-2 pitch fouled back. While we're at it, congratulations to our buddy Baker Mayfield. As Baker and his wife Emily welcome it in Kova Jade Mayfield late last tonight. Congratulations, Bake. There's a one hopper. Oh, Brito cut it off before it could get to Jennings and throws her out. It looked for a moment like it was going to be an easy one hopper to T.R.A. Jennings and flashing across was Alyssa Brito to make the play and there is two away. And here's Ogbayani. Three to one Sooners. First pitch, swing and a miss. Ogbayani lined out to third in the third. Okay. 
No balls and a strike. The pitch from Maxwell. A little bit out. Great crowd. Great job, Sooner Nation, this weekend. Took a little bit of time on Thursday. A bit of a weird night, but when it got rocking, it was rocking. The 1-1 is in for a strike. Strike two. As Coach Gasso joked about, we got to give him a reason to cheer. And those were few and far between last night. But here today, the crowd has been engaged and on it. The 1-2. Bouncer back up the middle, cut off by Jennings. She throws, and the inning is over. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning. It's 3-1 to one Sooners. Midfirst Bank is a premier mar a partner of OU Athletics in your exclusive home for the OU debit and credit card. Visit midfirst.com slash Sooners for details. Member FDIC. OG&E, OG&E, we energize live. We're off to the bottom of the fifth inning. OU leads it 3-1 to one on what's been a very well pitched and very well played game really from both sides there's one error on BYU that led to the first sooner run but it has been a much more well played day across the board than what we witnessed last night here's the first pitch to K9 it's on that outer edge strike one fans didn't like that I don't really know what to make of the strike zones the last few nights Today has been a really hard one to figure out from Chris Neighbors. Here's the 0-1, way up high. L last night was just, I felt like last night's was inconsistent. I felt like it was an inconsistent strike zone. And those are the worst. If you're going to be bad, just consistently be bad. It was a rough night last night for Jerry Jones. Here's the 1-1 for Hanson, and she rips it down the right field line. If it's fair, it's trouble. It's foul. The Trails Golf Club offers the perfect atmosphere for great golf and family fun. At the Trails, you'll find golf at its best and social events to enjoy all year. Entertain clients, enjoy friends, make family memories at the Trails Golf Club. Visit trailsgolf.com. Trying to get my direction of wind right here. I feel like on 17 today, you might be able to reach the green with a good high tailwind over at the uh, trails. 23 mile an hour winds out of the south. The 1 2 pitch to Hansen is low and away ball, too. Also, one other observation for those of you that have been dialed in rather in the stadium or while watching at home Morrow's been really good behind the plate blocking everything when there's a runner on base and nothing when there's a runner not on base <laughs> here's the 2-2 pitch to the sooner senior catcher it's way up ball three see that one pops out of her glove at the backstop but if there is a runner on base that needs a mistake like that to advance if it's in the dirt if it's high if it's outside man she is making every single play A three ball, two strike count. K9 waits and rips one in a right center field for a base hit. Cut off before it can get to the wall, but Hansen's going to slide in anyway, safely with a double. Hansen never slowed down, rounding first. And it's a leadoff double. You've noticed, too, the Sooners showing that fighter's mentality. Brito, after getting her two-out, two-run single, stood on the bag and had the boxer's pose, throwing a few punches. Hanson just did the same thing in second. Oh, Gordney. Of course, he's got to slow things down here. We're having too much fun. Looks like that might do it for Mores. Are we going to see our fourth pitcher of the night, or are they going to go back to Dolly here? Let's see. That looks like we're going to see our fourth pitcher of the night. Let's 
South Carolina forced a rubber game against Arkansas with a 2-1 to one win. Missouri looking to win the series against Florida. They're up 5-2 to two right now. And Georgia has rallied to take a 5-3 to three lead over Kentucky. Big game just underway between Tennessee and Mississippi State. They're scoreless. Top of the third, Louisiana already on top of Texas State. 3 to nothing. Auburn and LSU. Cal, UCLA, Stanford, Oregon State later on this evening. So to the pin, pitching change brought to you by Love's Travel Stops. Love's Travel Stops is the heart of the highway. As Chloe Temples has been called upon here. Temples, the lefty, will take over with a runner at second. Nobody out, and Alina Torres headed to the plate. Bland, by the way, is in the pinch run. And we're ready to go. Torres digs in. Pitching change again. Loves travel stops, the heart of the highway. One for two on the day for Alina Torres. Long wait as the first pitch is right down Lindsay for strike one. So Chloe Temples. Now in for BYU. 4.76 ERA. Six and six on the season. The 0-1 fouled back. Look like maybe, just maybe. Alina Torres had gone chase in there. Temple's got the start here on Thursday night. It was actually pretty good for a while, inning in two-thirds, four hits, four runs, struck out two, walked two. Kind of surprised they took her out as early as they did. Here's the 0-2 to Torres. A little bit out. Torres walked twice on Thursday night. So in the only appearance against Temple, she walked. The action clock is at zero. And Torres hammers one deep to center field. It burned Owens. Rounding third and heading home is Maya Plan. It's 4-1 Sooners. And Alina Torres scorched one, smoked one to center field. Owens broke in, and it was launched over her head. And the Sooners grab a 4-1 lead on the RBI single to the deepest part of the field from Alina Torres. On a pitch that probably shouldn't have been allowed. Alina Torres with a two-hit day. Avery Hodge will pinch run here. And in Cassidy Pickering's spot, we'll get a pinch hitter. And Riley Ludlam. The Phillips 66 Bedlam series is right around the corner. In fact, it's not our next home series, but the home series after that, three weeks away. Phillips 66 Bedlam series brought to you in part the people of Oklahoma Oil and Natural Gas, Oklahoma Blood Institute, and Anheuser-Busch. Here we go. Riley Ludlam digs in in a pinch hitting roll. Speaking of players who are hitting one to the moon in batting practice as the first pitch is up high, ball one. Sooner softball brought to you by Coca-Cola's Coke Zero Sugar, the best Coke ever. Take a taste and see. Coca-Cola, official partner of the Sooners. 352 season average for Ludlam. You heard the grunt. That thing dropped in for strike one. How about Alina Torres being the clutch bat for the Sooners today? Here's the 1-1 pitch with Avery Hodge pinned running over at first. It's headed home. Ludlam whiffs, swings through it. Keeping tabs on this Oklahoma State-Iowa State game while the Sooners have added to its lead to make it 4-1. to 
Iowa State's got the tying run in scoring position with nobody out in the bottom of the sixth inning. Here's the one-two to Ludlam. Pop fouled on the right side, well out of play. A little bit surprised we didn't end up seeing any of Temple last night. What, whatever the numbers said about this BYU staff coming in, the Sooners haven't been able to take advantage of that. 1-2 is hit hard at third. Nice play by Udall off a hop. They'll throw it a second for one, and Ludlam beats it out at first. Udall had no chance, uh, no option but to wear that one as that came up in her stomach. He walked it off, but she held on to it and got the force out at second. Wonder if we'll reiterate Pickering here to run. Nope. So here's Brito. Had the hit of the game so far. A two-run single with the bases loaded in the third inning. She's one for two, and she takes the first pitch low for ball one. Morrow steps out in front of the plate, takes her glove off, barking instructions to the rest of the infield. Brito's season average, by the way, is at 415, but with runners on base, like Ludlam is over at first, she's hitting 460 this season. Here's the 1 0. In for a strike, 1 and 1. 4 1 the Sooners, bottom of the fifth inning. BYU has come in here and battled, man. A ball and a strike to the Sooner third baseman. Here it comes. In the dirt. That got away just a bit from Morrow, but not far enough for Ludlam. And Patty Gasso is frustrated over at third. Ludlam should be on second. Smiles as she looks back over to the dugout. Two balls and a strike to Brito. I hope that doesn't come back to haunt the Sooners. Brito takes strike two. She can't believe it. Kicks a little dirt around in the batter's box. A short walk, three steps. Now she'll dig back in. Two balls and two strikes. Ludlam at first. The pitch to Brito is low. Ball three. Sid Sanders waits on deck. Full count on Brito. Win just strong right out to right field. Here's the pitch. Brito swings and hammers one. Deep to left field, and it's gone! A Brito bomb has given the Sooners a 6-1 to one lead! A no-doubter on a rocket that was sent into the left field bleachers to open this game up for the Sooners. Have a day, Alyssa Brito. Two for three with now four runs batted in. And here's Sid Sanders. Six to one Sooners. A little bit more like it. Home runs this season proudly brought to you by the dedicated people of Oklahoma Oil and Natural Gas. And that'll do it for Temple's as BYU will re-enter Dolly. And you kind of had the sense that Oklahoma was starting to get a pretty good feel about Kate Dolly before they brought in Agbayani for a couple of hitters. It'll be a righty-righty matchup for Sid Sanders here. Score updates. They go to the top of the seventh in, still in uh, Ames. Iowa State has tied up Oklahoma State 2-2. Two to two. And in the bottom of the fourth in Austin, Baylor and Texas are tied up at four.
when you can't be at the game, Sooner Sports TV has you covered on the air and online at Soonersports.tv. Sooner Sports TV is presented by our cornerstone partners, Anheuser-Busch and OU Health. And did you know every dollar you donate to the Oklahoma Medical Research Foundation goes directly to research, helping Oklahomans and people everywhere live longer, healthier lives. Learn more at Oklahoma about Oklahoma's Medical Research Foundation at omrf.org. Sooner Softball also brought to you by Brahms Ice Cream and Dairy Stores, farm fresh for over 50 years. Here's Sid, 0 for 1 with a walk and a fly out to right field. She bats here with nobody on and one out. And what's already been a three-run fifth for the Sooners. First pitch, a little bit low, ball one. We're having fun. This is fun. This is fun. 6-1 Sooners. The 1-0 pitch. Sanders waits and waits, and here it comes. It's low, ball two. Last night was not fun. Today, this afternoon, this is fun. And it's a big day for Alyssa Brita. Two balls and no strikes to Sanders. Ball three, and that one skips before the plate. Our buddy OU Architect had checked in. He said the wind at the trails is no bueno. Number 12, the par three at 145 was... You're hitting six irons, OU Architect, on that, on number 12? Oof. That is at least a two-and-a-half club win. Y'all, thanks for tuning in while you're golfing, Ruben. 3-0 to Sanders is right on the outer edge, ball four. All right, strike one. Should have been ball four. <laughs> Demo. Yeah, it hasn't been the best strike zone today. You're right. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Foul straight back. Demo, it was good to see you this weekend, man. Glad you got out to the park. I wish there is... I hope there is a way that everyone who is passionate and loves this program can find a way to get over here and see a game. It's truly majestic. Incredible. Still still putting the finishing touches on it, too. 3-2 to Sanders. Ripped foul down the left field line. The team areas, that's all for the team down on the lower level, the dugout level, if you will. A lot of work to do down there. The upper level, kind of here on the main seating level, is where the coaches' offices are. Still a lot of work to do in there. Here's the 3-2 to Sanders. Ball four. <laughs> and it's Riley Boone day. Here comes Riley Boone. Gasso is going to bring in Q Lilio to pinch run here. I think this is really cool that Quincy Lilio is on base while Riley Boone steps to the plate. We are really blessed thanks to the commitment of Joe Castiglione, Kelly Collier. Everyone involved with making it possible for us to travel to every single game to bring you Sooner softball and to see the relationship between Q and Riley is It's just awesome Boone takes the first pitch a little bit in for ball one Riley's one for one on the day with a single and a walk on Riley Boone day Four fifty average for Boone. Pitch. Ooh, checked her swing. Looked like she was going to slap at it. Strike one. Running up the box. Quincy's story is so incredible. I know that we haven't seen the massive numbers, but losing her dad right after a freshman season. The one-one pitch is Lilio's at first. Boone skies one to shallow right field. Ogbayani is under it. Makes the catch and. 
Moon is retired for the first time tonight. And here comes Jada Coleman. Jada's 0 for 2. They did credit her with a sacrifice. I don't know what you guys think, but I think one of the coolest things that has developed is before first pitch here, when the Sooners are at the plate and everyone's standing up, and when it's Jada, the hanging tree is playing, and it's just amazing just to hear everyone singing along. And as soon as the pitch is thrown, everyone chants, and they sit down and enjoy the game. First pitch to Jada is inside for ball one. I hope that sticks. One ball and no strikes. Jada, though, is... Ooh, they've got her on the scoreboard as 0 for 3. They did give her a sacrifice, so 0 for 2 on the day for Coleman, who takes the 1-0 pitch a little bit in two balls and no strikes. Q pins running for Sanders over at first. Two outs, a 2-0 count. Jada takes ball three outside. I mean, listen, Jada gets on board. You know what T.R.A. Jennings is going to come to the plate and do, right? She's going to end this game. Here's the 3-0 pitch to Coleman. Ball four. Just a reminder, as soon as this game wraps up, we'll have the Bud Light postgame show. Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. We'll head down to the field to talk to Coach Casso and hopefully Riley Boone and the heroes, maybe Alyssa Brito. <laughs> Do I even need to tell you what's going on right now? If you've been listening with any regularity, you know what's going on right now. Pete Meredith, the pitching coach for BYU has made his way out to the circle because they realize that T.R.A. Jennings, if you give her anything close to the plate, is going to hit one to the moon. Jennings on the day is one for two. She doubled and scored the first run of the game. walked and was forced out at home in a bases loaded situation in the third she grounded out to second her last time up and now she's got a chance to send this loves field crowd home in a frenzy first pitch is a little bit up ball one Season average, by the way, is now at 415. Mm. A ball and no strikes. Pitch to Jennings. Fouled it straight back on a pitch that was a little bit in. Tuesday night, we'd love to see you at Hall of Fame Stadium. There are tickets available. But it's only the lower bowl, so we're going to sell out. It's just a matter of when. Well, it's a pretty good pitch to do it, T.R.A. 1-1, one, one, headed home, a little bit out. Two balls and a strike. <laughs> 6 p.m. on Tuesday night. We'll be on the air from OKC with a 5.45 pregame show. Two balls and a strike. Bottom of the fifth, 6 1 as soon as the pitch. Ball three. Three balls, one strike. Wind just blowing, gusting out to right field. Lilio on second, Coleman at first. Here comes the 3 1. Ball four, bases loaded.
They didn't put anything near the plate for Jennings. BYU is making a defensive change, which means we're about to have another pitching change. Gordon Eakin has come out of the dugout. Are they? No. It's just a pitching, uh, a defensive change for now. Lauren Flanders has come in in center field. Which means there's probably a really good chance that Owens is going to catch. Well, we'll see. Listen, let's not get it. Let's just, Ella Parker, hit a home run and let's go home or put one in the gap or something. 6-1 Sooners. Ella's 0 for 2 on the day. Here's the first pitch. A little bit low, ball one. We're all heading over to baseball after this is done to watch the Sooners try to win the series over Kansas State. Coming up a little bit later on this evening, here's the 0-2 pitch to Ella Parker. Off-speed drops right in, 1-1. One one. Did I say the 0-2? I'm sorry. The 1-0 pitch is 1-1. One one. Two outs. One ball, one strike. Sacks full of Sooners. The pitch to Parker. Almost hit her. Ball two. In fact, Parker was hit by a pitcher last time up. Scored on the two-run bases-loaded single from Alyssa Brito. Here's the 2-1. Ooh, that off-speed dropped right in for strike two, and Patty Gasso can't believe something. Yeah, she's hot. She feels like that pitch was up. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Long look from the righty dolly. The pitch to Parker is hammered, but foul. Oh, look out. In the, <laughs> look out in the standing room section over there. She hit a laser down the right field concourse. And the count remains two and two. Dolly stares in that long winding rotation ground ball back up the middle diving play made it short But the shovel to second nobody's there Everybody safe on an incredible play by Aunt Bayani, but as she shoveled to the back Kamoko wasn't there Everybody safe. It's an RBI infield single for Ella Parker and it's 7-1 Sooners and Kinsey Hansen, who started this rally by taking an extra base, will bat here. Remember to start this first, this fifth inning. Kinsey Hansen had a double to right center field, and she never stopped running. Took an extra base, and it seemed to really inspire this team. It is now a four-run bottom of the fifth inning. And here comes K-9. Parker at first, Jennings at second, Coleman at third. Made sure to re-enter K-9. That's why there was a bit of a delay. Boy, Sooners have a chance to end this one here. Up 7-1. to one. The pitch to K-9 is in for a strike. Took the Sooners a little bit to get going today. Like it did last night. Unfortunately, the engine never started on Friday night. It did today as Hanson takes the ball low and away. How about this speed on the base paths? Coleman at third, Jennings at second, and the team leader in stolen bases, Ella Parker at first. 
Here comes the 1-1 pitch to Tiare. Or to K-9, pardon me, low and in. Two balls and a strike. I'm looking out and watching Tiare dancing around on second. I've got this nervous feeling now making sure no one ever leaves the bag early. <laughs> Jennings' knock on wood has not been called for that this year. Sooners have hit around here in the fifth. The pitch to K-9 popped up. Foul territory that's going to get out of play. First time the Sooners have batted around this inning, or this afternoon. Two balls, two strikes, two away. Here's the pitch, headed home. Up and in, almost hit her, ball three. Now everyone gets a little bit of a start. <laughs> Jada Coleman making sure to wave Jennings at second. Same for Parker, but also giving a call. Don't leave early. Don't leave early. Everybody up. Three balls and two strikes. The pitch to K-9. Grounded to the right side. Nice play off the hop. The shovel to first was a little off, but nice job by Alba to make the play and end the inning. But the Sooners give themselves some distance. Kelly Maxwell back to work for the Sooners. And the shift defensively has Avery Hodge in now at second. And Hannah Core will take over in right. JT Gasso with some final words on what that should look like on the lineup card with Coach Patty Gasso. There is an in-depth lineup conversation going on with Gordon Eakin. And our home plate umpire, Chris Neighbors, that just wrapped up in time for Patty Gasso to say, hold up. When we talked with Coach in our, I believe it was our pregame show last week, last week before OU Texas, she talked about liking what Hannah Core and Avery Hodge can give you in situations involving the defensive prowess that they have so to hopefully put that into more sensible words <laughs> they're late inning defensive substitutions that have done a good job this season so here we go 7-1 Sooners we're in the top of the sixth inning 9-1 and two hitters for BYU first pitch to Simmons is low for ball one Macy a strikeout victim in the second one of three strikeouts for Kelly Maxwell. We'd like to thank Love's Travel Stops, the presenting sponsor of OU Softball, Love's Travel Stops, the heart of the highway. And Love's has been our presenting sponsor all weekend long on the radio side. The 1-0 misses low and away, 2-0. I'd also like to thank the official Eat, Play, Stay partners. Visit Norman, Cup Bop, Courtyard by Marriott, Midway Deli, Nashburn, and Norman in CED. Visit Soonersports.com for more info. It's a bouncer foul. Down the left side. We'll see you Tuesday night for the final midweek game of the season. Against Tulsa. And Rich Martis points out is the top of the sixth starts at a little after 3 o'clock. Kelly Maxwell's last pitch was at 2.30 p.m. As the 2-1 pitch misses up and in. So in other words, about a... a 30-minute half inning for the Sooners and putting four runs on the board. I never saw, I'm sure she did, if Maxwell raced down to the bullpen at all to get some throws in. Swing and a miss on the 3-1, strike two. Kevin points out the TV said that Temple is on a, a pitch count. Uh, e even if she is, I'm, I'm having a hard time trying to figure out the plan here here's the three two low ball four final score from Ames Iowa Iowa State has taken the series from Oklahoma State a walk-off home run in the bottom of the seventh inning and Iowa State has beaten Oklahoma State five to two and they take the series Wow that is a Shocker.
thanks to Chuck for giving us the heads up, as, as you might imagine. we got to slow things down here a little bit. It's getting a little too hectic. Gordon Eakin had to slow it down. Pinch runner in the game after Simmons' walk. Wow, that's, that's a shocker. Bennett is pinch running over at first. Especially with the way things had gone for Iowa State the last few weeks. Bond attempt by Ogbayani is missed for strike one. Alana Ogbayani, 0 for 1, but did walk and stole a base here tonight. One of the biggest keys for the Sooners has been keeping her off the base paths. She was a problem here last night. And she laces this one foul. We brought this stat up earlier if you missed it. But the four-hit game last night by Ogbayani, first player with four hits against the Sooners since Hannah Rebar of North Texas, February 29, 2020. The 0-2 pitch, grounded foul. That was actually the last weekend before the season shut down. The Sooners had one more non-conference series and then Texas was coming in. Texas was red hot that year. They were looking good. Line drive, base hit into right field. Core cuts it off and gets it back in quickly. And after the Sooners put some separation between themselves and the Cougars. Leadoff walk to Simmons. And now the first hit of the night for Alana Agbayani. Left field Here's Maddie Bayerano. She's one for two with a single. First pitch to the left-handed hitting left fielder is a little bit in. Ball one. Seven runs on eight hits for the Sooners. The only run for BYU, a second inning home run for Matty Udall. But they have a good threat going here as the 1-0 pitch is in for a strike. First and second, nobody out. Just can't shake these guys. Here's the 1-1, a little bit low. Well, Maxwell seems to have lost the handle just a bit to start this inning, but as our buddy Rich Martis pointed out, there were 30 minutes between when she had thrown a pitch and game action. That doesn't happen that often here in this sport. 2-1, popped up. There you go. Right side of the infield. Who's got it? Core comes racing in late to make the catch. And there's one away. Hodge started to shade out a bit, and... You could tell she was having problems right away. And right there was her buddy, her pal, Hannah Core. First out. Lily Owens will re-enter here. Still a perplexing shift in the last half inning. Bottom of the fifth, they took Owens out and brought in Flanders for the last out. Maybe Flanders has a little better arm, maybe. Owens is 0 for 2 on the day. First pitch in the dirt. Good job by Riley Ludlam. The other change that we failed to mention behind the plate. So Sanders at first. She's deep and playing off the line. Straight away at second is Hodge. Same for Jennings at short. Even at the bag at third is Brita. As the 1-0 pitch misses out 2-0. Riley Boone is enjoying her senior day in left field. Fairly shallow. A little deeper than normal for Coleman in center. And straight away, normal depth and right for Core. 2-0 is a check swing and strike. I don't think it mattered if she swung or not. It looked like a good pitch. 7-1 Sooners. We're in the top of the sixth inning. BYU, though, threatening here with runners at first and second. 
another pitch in which it looked like Owens checked her swing. This one, though, a little bit too in. So now the count has run three balls in a strike. Maxwell, long look. There's four on the pitch clock at the hip. She rocks and fires with a 3-1. Swinging a bouncer back to the circle. Takes a weird roll. Oh, they're going to call it foul. Iowa State beat Oklahoma State on a walk-off home run. Marin, their backup catcher. How about that for a moment? Iowa State takes that series. The 3-2 pitch is bounced to third. Brito steps on the back for one. Throws across wide. Sanders, though, couldn't get back on the bag in time. It was nearly a tag to back. Throw him out. Double play. But Owens beat it down the line for the fielder's choice. Ogbayani moves up to second. It was bounced perfectly to Brito. Standing on the bag, a good throw would have got her. Just rushed the throw a bit. There's Hunter Ava. Fielder's choice for Lily Owens. First pitch, a little out, ball one. I think we could have a happy postgame show if the Sooners can hold a BYU at one here. And then end this thing in the bottom of the sixth inning. I think we're going to have a happy postgame show regardless. This is fun. Here's the 1-0 pitch, swing and a foul to play, 1-1. One one. Though it makes you appreciate the greatness of this team and this program and where it's been for the last, you know, at this level, previous four, five, six years. Here's a 1-1 for Maxwell. Ground ball to third. Oh, under the glove of Brito. They're going to hold the runner at third. That just snuck under the glove of Brito, and the bases are loaded for BYU. And here comes Matty Udall, who homer. Back in the second inning. The two squared off in the third, in the uh, fourth. And Maxwell got the ground out. Jin Rocha realizes they need a moment to make sure everyone is on the same page. So she'll jog out and chat with Kelly Maxwell here. Texas has padded its lead against Baylor. A two-run bottom of the fifth inning, and the Warrens will head to the sixth. Actually, it's just started the top of the sixth. Texas up 8-5 to five on the Baylor Bears. That game today is in Austin after last night's run rule win for Texas was in Waco. Kansas and Tech later on this evening. Tech took game one of that series last night. And UCF up 6-0 in the top of the fourth on Houston. Scores for the Big 12 brought to you by Air Comfort Solutions. Hey, listen to coverage of the NCAA championships on the Varsity Network app powered by Learfield. Fans can hear Westwood One's exclusive national coverage along with most schools broadcast through a multicast option. It's only on the Varsity Network app available for free in your app store. All right, all the meetings are over. Matty Udall digs in with the bases loaded. First pitch grounded at third. Brito, glove, steps on the back, inning over. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Brito had one go under her glove and makes a play to end it. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Changes galore for BYU. We'll update you as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. 7-1 Sooners lead it. The University of Oklahoma and Sooner Sports Properties would like to thank our concession partners. Anheuser-Busch, Fletcher's Original Corny Dogs, Coca-Cola, The Baked Bear, Community Coffee, Taco Mayo, Boomerang Diner, Schwab Meat, and Uber Eats. And the people of Oklahoma Oil and Natural Gas are deeply invested in our state. Voluntarily cleaning land associated with well sites that were abandoned 50, even 100 years ago. They've now invested more than $155 million to clean over 20,000 historic well sites at no cost to landowners across the state. 
incredible stuff from OERB. Check out all the great stories at OERB.com slash micro. And log on to Soonersports.com slash kids for information about joining the Sooner Junior Kids Club. Presented by OG&E and brought to you in part by Orthodontist exclusively Mathis Home and Devon Energy. Avery Hodge will get her first at bat of the game. It's back to work for Kate Dolly. First pitch, Hodge shows bunt, pulls it back, takes strike one. Avery Hodge hitting 293 on the season. So Udall is back in at third, Agbayani at short, Kamoku at second, and Alva now at first with Morrow behind the plate as the 0-1 pitch misses low and in. The change is they have moved Bejarano now to center. They've brought in Lennon out and left, and they've kept Ogbayani out and right. The 1-1 is popped in a shallow right field, and it falls for a hit. Avery Hodge, I believe the term is a little Tex Leaguer. And that is the ninth hit of the game for the Sooners, and here's Riley Ludlam. Ludlam reached on a fielder's choice in her last plate appearance. First pitch to Ludlam. Boy, a fourth home run would look nice here, Ludlam, in this game. The pitch. Ooh, she had the pitch and took it for strike one. No balls and a strike. Here's the pitch to Ludlam. Low and away, one and one. Seven runs on nine hits for the Sooners. They were charged with an error. A run on three hits for BYU and an error. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch to Ludlam. Low and away, 2-1. Two balls and a strike to Ludlam. Brito waits on deck. Lead-off single from Avery Hodge. The pitch to Ludlam. Ooh, she had a cut when Hodge was going. Grounded foul. <laughs> I was texting with one of the interview coordinators, and I said, let's make sure we get Riley Boone afterwards. Right after Riley Ludlam walks it off. <laughs> the response was perfect. Here's the 2-2 to Ludlam. Low and away, ball three. <laughs> I mean, again, though, there is the looming possibility that might not be bad to go ahead and play a seventh, but I think it's also good to have that run rule win after last night. Ludlam grounds one back up the middle, but it's cut off at second by Kamoku, who turns the double play. Ah, so much for the Ludlam walk-off prediction. Here comes Brito. That was a nice play. Back up the middle. I mean, they have had the Sooners scouted pretty, pretty well. So here's Brito with two outs. Brito, two for three with a home run. A single. Four runs batted in. She takes the first pitch outside for ball one. <laughs> Sanders waits on deck. Brito's two for three nine has her season average at 420 currently. She rips one in the left field, a base hit. I mean, Brito, have a day, kid. Have a day. A three for four day for Alyssa Brito. And she's aboard for Sid Sanders. First 
<laughs> Gordon Egan is out of the pen again, or out of the uh, dugout again. This game has no business having lasted two hours and 26 minutes. He pointed out to right field and then pointed to the infield. So I don't know if they're making another pitching change here. But at the very least, it's a, it's a rather long conversation. No pitching change. What was he pointing the outfield for? Gordon's dressed like he's going to go mow his yard after the game today. He didn't really get too sported up for us. Looks like he's got a little edging to do around the pool when things are done after the game today. He's jawing with a couple fans down in the front row. He's just enjoying the sunshine. 7-1 Sooners, bottom of the sixth inning, meeting is over. Brito at first. Sanders on the day, as I mentioned, 0 for 1. First pitch, nearly hitter, ball one. Sanders has walked twice. Flied out to right field. Here's the 1-0. In the dirt to the backstop, off to second goes Brito. Three and a third so far today for Kay Dolly. Five hits, two runs, only one of them earned. She's walked four. She's behind 2-0 here to Sid Sanders. Two balls and no strikes to Sid. A little bit out, ball three. Three balls and no strikes. Doubtful Sid has the green light here, probably if she wants it. Here's the pitch to Sanders. Ball four. I mean, how cool could this be, right? Riley Boone on her senior day. With two outs in the bottom of the sixth inning. And the Sooners up 7-1. Runners at first and second. Boone on the night is one for two. Walked. Flied out to right field in her last two plate appearances. She checked her swing on strike one. A little bit over that outer edge. <laughs> no balls and a strike. Boone got under one down the right field line, hooking foul, and it is off the netting and out of play. No balls and two strikes to Boone. Jada Coleman waits on deck. BYU in no hurry. Is now getting back to first base is Ava. No balls and two strikes. Here's the pitch to Boone. Line drive caught at third. Oh, that might have been down the line. And she could have still been running. Regardless, though, the Sooners are three outs away from uh, winning the series. Uh, Haley Morrow and Alea Ogbayani. Six, seven, and eight do up for BYU as Kelly Maxwell looks to make it a complete game with a 7-1 lead here in the top of the seventh inning. Seven runs on ten hits for the Sooners. BYU has had just three hits, and Maxwell has been amazing. Here's the first pitch, low and away, ball one. Sooners blew this game open with a four-run bottom of the fifth inning. And they haven't looked back, leading it 7-1. to one. A Lefty Maxwell brings it home. 
Strike one. Kamoku has been really, really good in the field tonight. I keep saying tonight, this afternoon over at second base. Made a couple of nice plays, but she's 0 for 2 at the plate. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Grounded down the third baseline, fair into the left corner. Boone plays it off the hop, gets it back in quick, but not quick enough before Kamoku is in with a leadoff double. That'll be just the fourth hit of the game for BYU. And here's Haley Morrow. She's 0 for 2 on the night. Morrow digs in from the right side of the plate. The first pitch. Maxwell's just pounding the zone. Strike one. They're headed to the bottom of the sixth inning in Austin. Texas's lead over Baylor is 9-6. to six. Actually, they're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Swing and a miss on the 0-1 strike, too. If you're just tuning in, Oklahoma State has lost to Iowa State for the second straight day. The Cowgirls lose the series in Ames. No balls and two strikes. Pitch from Maxwell. Ooh, that just missed a little bit out. One and two. Next weekend, the free swing in Houston Cougars will be coming to town under former Sooner Kristen Vesley. Challenging road trip to Orlando and then home to wrap it up against Oklahoma State. And better. Swing and a miss. Big pitch from Kelly Maxwell for the first out. And a fourth strike out of the game. Make sure that jives with the official stats. We had a strikeout controversy. Here on Thursday night between Aaron Miller's book and mine. I'm right. Correct. Fourth strikeout for Maxwell. First pitch to Agbayani is low for ball one. This is Alea Agbayani. But now in right field had a key moment early in this game. In the first inning dropped a pop fly that allowed the Sooners to score its first run of the game. A 1-0. Fouled straight back. A ball and a strike. At the plate, Alea is 0 for 2. He's lined out to third and grounded out to short. Looks like we're getting the pinch hitter in the nine hole here for the Cougars. For now, the 1 1 is sky to center field and pretty deep. Jada Coleman goes back, climbs the wall, and it's gone. A two-run home run, just her second of the season from Alea Ogbayani. And BYU cuts it to four. It's seven to three Sooners. Maybe we started having fun a little bit too early. This is reminiscent to the, what would that be, the Saturday game, Thursday, Friday, Saturday series against KU. That Saturday game against Kansas, the Sooners had many opportunities to end that game in run rule fashion and weren't able to do it. And then you looked up and Kansas is making the score much more uncomfortable than they should. A pinch hitter here. Well, they were going to have a pinch. It looks like that they've gone back to... Have they gone back to Simmons? No. Madrigal is going to pinch hit here. Still one out. Still two outs away from a sooner win. As Madrigal finally digs in, no rush whatsoever in anything that Gordon Eakin does. Even when it comes to bringing in a pinch hitter when his team has some momentum. First pitch strike. <laughs> Lindsay Madrigal trying to keep things alive here for BYU. 
Just a 125 hitter. She's two for 16 on the season. And the 0-1 misses outside. One ball, one strike. Seven to three now, Sooners. We're in the top of the seventh inning. Pitch for Maxwell. Popped up, right field. This could be trouble if it's fair, but it's foul as Core just couldn't get there in time, racing in. One ball, two strikes. What a battle BYU has put forth this weekend. One ball, two strikes. Maxwell stares in. The crowd claps in unison. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Two away. Fifth strike out of the game for Maxwell. And here's the ultimate Sooner killer. Ilana Ogbayani. Get her out of town. After a four-hit day yesterday, she's one for two with a walk here today. Was stranded at third in the sixth. First pitch, misses inside, ball one. Ten hits tonight for the Sooners. BYU held to just five. The 1-0 is ripped foul down the first baseline, a ball and a strike. One ball, one strike. Maddie Bejarano waiting for hopefully another opportunity. The pitch. Strike two. Everybody stands. Everybody stands at Love's Field. Maxwell is ready. The one two. Low and away, two and two. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch from Kelly. Pop foul down the left side and well out of play. By the way, this has been. If you're just tuning in for the final three outs, this has been what <laughs> Ogbayani has done pretty much the entire week and frustrate the heck out of the Sooners. <laughs> Kelly Maxwell has had a good hold on her, though. Until she got the single in the sixth. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch from Kelly headed home. Bounce back up the middle. Hodge deep behind the back. Throws late. Infield single. It just won't go away. Maddie Bejarano. That just got over the glove of Maxwell. There's Maddie Bejarano. Runner at first now. 7-3. to three. Sooner is still in a good spot. This throw strikes here, Kelly Maxwell. The first pitch is swing and a miss. Sooners have scored seven runs while leaving 11 runners on base today. BYU has only left four. A no ball, one strike pitch in the dirt. Good job by Ludlam. It is officially a final. Texas has taken the series from BYU. They went at 9-6. to six. This after being swept by the Bears last year. More scores in the post-game show coming up. Here's the 1-1 from Maxwell. In for strike two. Now everyone's back up again. The 1-2. Swing and a miss. Ball game. 
Win column Sooners, game over, series secured. Oklahoma bounces back from one of its toughest performances of 2024 and beats BYU by a final score of 7-3.